Hello everyone, my name is Zach Harris with Protom USA, and I'd like to thank you for joining me again in Protom's webinar series for the first time in 2023. In today's webinar, we're covering measuring and designing a boat deck using the ProLiner decking package. Uh, before we get started, just want to address that if you have any questions during the webinar, you can feel free to type them into the Q&A chat and we'll address them during the presentation. You can also send us an email over to info at protomusa.com or call our office at 772-465-4000 extension 1. So the ProLiner decking package is a turnkey measuring and design solution for installers and fabricators of marine decking. The decking package features the industry leading ProLiner the ba a backpack to carry the ProLiner around as it's portable, tripod, uh, the batteries, leap pods, and special accessories like the IPT pen extensions that allow you to get to hard to reach places with ease. The decking package also comes with a seat of the Protom Factory Draw Advanced software that is used to complete the design process. So the first step is producing a digital template of an existing deck with the ProLiner. Here we will explain the steps to get an accurate file that you can send off to design. As you see here in the slide, we're going to set the ProLiner up on the left side of the step pad or swim platform because this uh, deck is multiple layers. Then we're going to move the ProLiner. We're going to initiate a leap function, which we'll go over later on in the presentation and then we will measure the right side of the swim platform. We're going to perform two more leaps to finish measuring the main deck area and we're also going to talk about the IPT that I mentioned earlier to get those hard to reach points. Before we get into the video of the measuring, uh, we'd just like to double check the ProLiner settings, the measure settings that you should have. So under pen uh, you want to start off in pointer. Now during the measuring process we will change it uh, to IPT eventually but we will explain that process when we get there. Uh, contour you always want it to be open. The compensation we're just going to leave it at none to make it easy. And under projection most of the time when measuring for marine flooring uh, boats have multiple layers but they're multiple 2D layers so we're going to set the projection to multiple planes and we're going to define our planes by using our first contour which is our first set of points. And then at the bottom we're going to use offset plane. Alright now we're going to get into the video here and uh, let's get started. So just kind of want to explain first how important the setup is of the ProLiner. You really want to start off in an area where you can uh, try to reach the most points and get a good workflow throughout the measuring process. So we decided to put the ProLiner here on the, uh, that is the right side of that swim platform step pad area. The first step is to set a plane for the uh, level that you're measuring. So we're going to take three or more points. That's our first contour to set our plane. Once we do that, you press the three button on the remote and we're going to start taking the outside contours of the uh, step pad area there. We're going to take some multiple points around the curve of the bow area of the boat. And how this boat and you know most boats are uh, a lot of sometimes they're in really compact areas so uh, we're only going to measure half and then leave the ProLiner to the other half. Wanted to point something out that we just did in the video is uh, measured three points to get around that uh, circular area there so you only need three points to create a circle and uh, once you do that uh, in our factory draw advanced software, you can then uh, make the circle based upon those three points. So here I just measured the hatch. Uh, then we're going to go around and measure the, uh, the hinges. 
We're just taking two points on the straights, and then we're gonna take at least three points around the radiuses there to get a nice uh, reference area of where those are actually located. And move on to the last one now. Notice uh, only took points right in the center of everything is because we will offset in both directions later on in the design process to create actual multiple pieces here. So I've measured everything that I could from the right side and now we're going to initiate a leap function. As you see, uh, sometimes measuring in the marine applications we provide lead pods with the pro liner but you don't always need to use them as you see here i'm marking tape on hardware or just tape with the x in the middle uh, to reference my lead points and so you need four lead points to move the pro liner you have to be able to hit those points from position a which is the right side and then we also have to be able to hit those same four points from position b which is the where we're gonna, uh, which is the left side where we're gonna move the pro liner over to. So, get a leap result. If we're happy with the leap. You see, the one thing with the leap, those points cannot be in a straight line or a perfect rectangle. And once I've initiated and created my leap, then I can put the machine all back together. One thing that I'm doing here is there's a drawer on the ProLiner 8X uh, on the left side of the machine. You do wanna make sure if you're putting that drawer up against the wall, uh, this is just a little tip and trick that I've ran into in the field before. You wanna make sure everything's out of that drawer before you reposition it so uh, you don't have to leap it again to get into that drawer. Now we're gonna open the ProLiner back up. It is important that you uh, close the pro liner completely every time you move the machine. So here I'm just making sure I can reach all my lead points before I actually connect to my lead. So I'm going to hit connect. The pro liner is going to ask you to initialize the encoders again, and then we're going to remeasure those same four points. What's nice about the lead function on the pro liner is that, excuse me, you don't have to uh, measure them in the same order. So I hit point three, point four, and you get a mismatch distance of about a 30 second, which is acceptable for this industry. And uh, when I'm ready to continue, I would just hit the three button. And then now I can, uh, as you see on the screen here, just kind of pick up where I left off. I'm just gonna speed the video up a bit for time purposes. You can get the gist of the measuring process just doing everything that I did on the left side, on the right side where I couldn't reach because the ProLiner was positioned there before. So once I've measured the top step pad area, swim platform area, uh, now I'm going to initiate another leap. So this leap is going to allow me to move down to the main deck. So I'm setting up my four leap points to move down to the main deck. Sometimes you can use the same leap points. Um, this case, we weren't able to do that. But you can create as many leaps as you need to to get the job done. So I just created my leap and now we're going to reposition the pro liner down to the main deck area. And this is where the multiple planes is going to come into play. So from this point now we're going to, uh, once I connect to the leap, you'll see on the pro liner we're going to actually change the layer so we can define a new plane on the main deck. Just again, uh, it's important to just double check that you can reach all the points that you need to from the position that you chose. 
help save time in the field uh, so you don't start and realize that you can't reach everything. I'm gonna re-measure those four lead points. Got a really good leap this time, about 10 thousandths of an inch. So now you'll see the layer change on the bottom of the Pro Liner. Uh, now we're in layer 2.1, we were in layer 1.0. Now I can create a new plane on the main deck to measure that. So we will have multiple planes. The importance of doing multiple planes for boats, if you're gonna put a pattern throughout the whole deck area, you wanna be able to have everything measured in its exact location. So I just took four more points here. I just pressed the three button on the remote just to change the contour, not the layer. So just pressing it one time, not the long press. And now I'm just gonna measure as many points as I can from this location. Again, I'm just measuring to the edges three points for our circles. You need three or more points when you're measuring in your radiuses. It's nice, you can also double check uh, the screen. The ProLiner is giving you uh, real-time data of the points that you're taking. So now I've, I've done everything that I can from this position and I've reached some points right behind this T-top foot that I'm gonna need to use the IPT. So you have two options. You can either leap the machine or use the IPT. In this case, IPT is a better option. And I'm choosing the IPT 400. IPT stands for inverted pen technology. It comes in four lengths, IPT two, four, six, and eight. So. The 400 extension is uh, one of the IPT tips plus one of the lengths, and then you screw those into the back of the pen. And now we're actually measuring with the bottom of the pen, as my finger just indicated, instead of the top portion where the wire is connected to. It helps get the wire out of the way in certain situations so you have more flexibility on taking points. Now taking points with the IPT is a little different than the regular pointer as you don't just press the one button. You have to do a series of points to record a point. So you use the one button and you press it. For instance, you would put the pen at a north orientation, press the one button. East orientation, press the one button. South orientation, press the one button. West orientation, press the one button. When you go back to north, you press and hold the one button, and that would actually record the point. Those, uh, those series of points help the ProLiner do all the necessary calculations to record that point in an accurate position. You can change back to the pointer pin mid-measurement as you can change to the IPT. So if you press the three button, on the remote, uh, you can go into your settings and change your pen. So I've changed back the pointer now, uh, initiating another leap. This time I was able just to connect to the previous leap that I made, so leap two. And uh, even though I moved the pro liner uh, a third time, I only had to use initiate two leaps essentially uh, because of how I positioned everything. So now I'm just going to measure the. Um, areas that were left and now I can verify the measurements on the screen so just you can rotate in 3d just to kind of view everything make sure everything looks correctly that's a, one of the nice things about the ProLiner system so I just save the file now it, it's very important to take pictures of the job that you did so you can transfer those over so you have references when you're doing the design work. So just a couple pictures of uh, 
just some important areas is always a nice thing to have. Once I get all the pictures, we can transfer the file using the ProLiner File Transfer app on the Google Play Store. And you can Bluetooth the files directly to your phone and email them from the field directly to the office. Uh, you can choose the measurement files as well as all the pictures that you took. You can send them all in one shot in an email. And now, once we email them directly from the field, we can import them into the Protom Factory Draw Advanced. And we're gonna show a little bit more uh, of a video of the design process next. All right, so the final step is the design process in the Protom Factory Draw Advanced. So these are just some of the uh, like an outline of what we're going to do here. We're going to open the file. Uh, we're going to adjust any of the regular geometry lines, sort of clean them up. We're going to offset the lines after that to create the actual outer borders. Um, then we're going to finish the edges by putting the radiuses that are necessary. Then we're going to create borders for a pattern to go in. We're going to utilize the uh, pattern library that comes in the factory draw advance which is a really cool feature in the factory draw advance software um, then after that we're going to create a production ready file to send off to uh, a CNC router So the first step is importing the file into the Proton Factory software. And all the pictures are here as well. So you can sort of organize as you feel necessary, uh, sort of get a grasp of what was measured. If you had any questions, like if somebody else was doing the design work and somebody else was doing the measuring, they could communicate some of the uh, areas that were questionable. Now, first, you, we can view this in a 2D, 3D view as we did on the ProLiner. And now you see we have our two different layers, so we, we can organize those as well as the bow, step pad deck, and then the main deck. You can switch between them. The, the ProLine of Proton Factory software puts them in two separate drawing tabs. So we can focus on one at a time. It helps organize files, make it a little bit easier to clean up. What's nice about the Proton Factory Draw Advanced software is you notice we're deleting the radiuses here and you can see like almost a ghost line, if you will. That's the interpolated data in the software. So if you pull in the PRL8 file from the ProLiner, um, you can delete those radiuses and then interpolate. If you turn interpolated data on, those, that interpolated data will show up. And it makes it really nice when redrawing the radiuses. As you can see here, you can now just do a general fillet in the software and you see where the measured data was, but there is no actual geometry there. So you don't, helps just to save time in the cleanup process. You can also, if you know what the radiuses are going to be, you can also just type in the uh, actual dimension of the radius in the box that pops up there. And what's really cool is you, you can sort of drag these, uh, the hinges to the location where they need to be. Uh, this is using the fillet tool in the Proton Factory Draw Advance. It's super, super uh, useful for cleaning up these uh, deck files. We're just going to continue the cleanup here. Now, as we talked about that uh, those three points to create a circle, so we use the draw and arc tool 
touch those three points and then just type in 360 degrees. And that was gonna create our circle. Now we can delete those, the geometry up here. First, we're gonna use the fillet tool. And that's gonna give us a really nice clean arc there. Do the same thing on the other side. The fillet tool gives you a lot of flexibility in the cleanup process to really smooth these lines out the way that they're supposed to be. Because most of the time on boats, uh, no sides are the same. It's not really symmetrical. A lot of times, as with most construction, uh, everything is a little bit off. We're gonna offset that outside line, the desired distance. We're gonna bring it inside because we measured up to the actual uh, gunnel. So depending on the material that you're using and uh, the boat and where the non-skid's at, it kind of determines how much you wanna offset the line. But this just gives us an offset so that we can uh, push the material inside and it's still going to get a nice, uh, it's still going to adhere to the surface well. And same thing with the, uh, the hinges, we're just going to offset the outside, we're going to delete the inner ones. Because you want to be off, we measure directly to the uh, those hinges there. And then uh, here we measure directly to the center of the, like in between the hatch and the, the main uh, deck area. So we want to offset that both ways. And we're gonna delete those lines in the middle. And what's nice about the Proton Factory software, another nice feature is you have a, like a contour list and also a layer lip list on the left side. So once you click one portion of a line segment, It'll highlight it over to the left, and then you can simply click on the check in the box over there to uh, select the rest of that contour. Again, we're, we're just gonna continue offsetting everything, the direction that needs to go based off of the, um, where it was measured in, in the boat and what kind of design you're, that you're actually going for. We're gonna uh, cut this circle here because the diameter of the circle will almost pretty much just break into the sides of the material. So we wanna make uh, a cutout, if you will, there, and then we're gonna put some radiuses there to clean it up and make it look really nice. So we're gonna change this layer, call it bow deck. Now we're gonna come in here and make our finish radiuses. So this is 
gonna be determined by like the type of router you have or the type of material. Uh, this changes, uh, there's sort of like an industry standard, but this can change. So we're gonna do a half an inch radius there. Now we're gonna create seams here. So you have to uh, know the parameters of your material size because you are not gonna be able to fit everything into one sheet. So um, once you understand the size of your material, you're gonna know that you most likely are gonna have to create a seam in some pieces so you can nest them correctly on the material. So you wanna make the seams look nice here we just choose to chose to make a one center seam here uh, in that to break apart that top piece into two pieces so essentially you'll have five pieces and now we're we can uh, change these layer names into like a pattern border layer so when we go to the pattern library feature in the software, we're gonna be able to just simply select the pattern border layer. It's gonna allow us to choose all the geometry in that layer, and then we can actually just throw a pattern into that area. So this step is we're just creating finishing the cleanup process, creating the radiuses in the border area. Once we're done with this, we're gonna be able to show one of the cool features of the software, which is actually the pattern library. You see now, we're changing all these contours. We're gonna just drag them, or you can simply right click on them and change it to the pattern border layer. So you have your outer perimeter, Geometry and then your pattern border geometry. Now the main work on the bow area is done. So we're going to do the same cleanup process here on the main deck. So we're gonna do the circle again. We can come in the this makes you know easy work of cleaning up the like the foot pads around the T top. And by using the fillet tool, really cool feature. a draw arc tool to get a better uh, arc or a radius there on the bottom. You also want to make sure when you're cleaning up everything is in the same layer or else you'll see these white dots that indicate an open contour. So 
if you are cleaning stuff up in the Proton Factory software and you notice those little white and red dots, you do want to check your layer list on the left side and just make sure that you have everything in the same layer. So here again, we're going to utilize the fillet tool to smooth and interpolate the data on the outer contour. Row radiuses in our corners. And you can adjust You see, this is in real time. The, the cleanup process is pretty quick, and uh, and the Proton Factory software really simplifies the drawing of it. So you don't have to be a CAD wizard to do this stuff, and uh, you can really create really cool uh, designs here directly on the Proton Factory software. Going to do our fillets here. So again, you're going to put a, a fillet here, and delete the geometry in the middle. So the material is going to sort of fit snug around that foot pad area. So we're going to name that layer the main deck, and then we're going to offset everything. Before we do the offset, so we're going to create a seam here. We're going to offset the seam both sides. Uh, the width between the seams is going to be determined by the type of material that you use and the look that you're going for. We did an eighth inch gap. We just put everything into the same layer. We're going to offset each individual piece now. So we went from one piece to two pieces by creating that seam. Uh, we offset for our pattern border. We're just going to clean up that pattern border by just making the corners radius. It's important that every corner has a radius in it because you are cutting the foam with a router. And it has to have some sort of minimum radius uh, based on the tooling. And once we've done that, we can uh, check those two inside contours. We'll change that layer to the pattern border layer. And now the next step, we can view it in a 2D, 3D view. And this is another very cool feature in the Proton Factory Draw Advanced software is this flatten button that you just saw. So when you measure things in multiple planes, you'll see it in the 2D, 3D view. But if you once you hit flatten, it'll put everything down to the same plane. So now we can put uh, a pattern throughout the whole drawing uh, in the same plane. It's very important. Uh, in, a, in a really nice feature that uh, a lot of other software solutions, it takes a lot longer to do that and to create a, a clean file that way. So you just created a production piece here. And now we're going to select our pattern border and go to one of the cool features in here, which I've been talking about is a pattern library. So the factory software comes with just a uh, you know, a, a, uh, a sample library, if you will, of some different patterns that the industry uses. And as you can see here, we're just sort of switching in between a couple, like you've got fish scales, we had some rectangles there earlier. Um, you have teak lines, which are very popular, of course, uh, like diamond patterns. 
all this stuff can be created actually in this in the pattern library itself there's a edit patterns button up at the top in the toolbar up there where you can create your own patterns you can feel free to use some of our sample patterns again they are just sample patterns um, but they can work for real production so we're gonna name this uh, production piece with pattern in it and one of the other cool features of this is we can actually create a material you can like go online and select a specific color and place a material behind it to give it a real look to show your customers so we went with this teak brown background you can see all the teak lines this is what the actual deck is going to look like you can publish this out uh, it, it exports out a, a DXF file for the actual production as well as a, a PDF file uh, to show your customers all right now we had a file that's ready for ready for production and ready to send over to the router. Uh, again, the, this is the ProLiner decking package. It's a turnkey solution that brings you from measuring to design in an easy and accurate process. Here are some uh, projects that are completed by some of our customers using the ProLiner decking package. Uh, we love seeing these projects, guys, so feel free to send them over. We, If you'd like, we share them on social media, on our website, on our blog. Um, but we do love getting finished products. We love to see what people are doing with the ProLiner. Uh, it's, it's our passion. I want to thank you guys for attending today's webinar. Uh, keep an eye out for future webinar sessions. We're going to have some more this year on uh, other, some of our other industry solutions. But as always, please feel free to contact us uh, for tailored advice on the solution that you're looking at any of our systems for. But until next time, I want to thank you guys and have a great day.